Oh, good morning. It's Good Friday. Uh, those of you who had a Passover Seder, remember, we're all slaves in some different forms, and uh, hope you find your way to freedom, make your exodus out of that slavery. But then you move to the Christian thing. No death uh, without resur resurrection without death. There has to be some kind of letting go in order for it to be a rebirth, right? And yoga is helping us do that in its own way. You know, when I get up in the morning, many of you know that the first thing I do is I look in the mirror. And <clears throat> first of all, I'm, I'm lost in terms of my own prophetic understanding. I look at the world in one way, and I don't know if I should go out and try to save it. So many people are drowning out there. But then I look in the world another way, and it's like beautiful and perfect in its own strange way. And then I should just savor it. So I don't know. It makes it difficult to understand. Should I save it or savor it or both or confusing. So I cut through and what I do is basically I look in the mirror and first I do my Antonio Bandaras imitation. I look at myself and I go, you are too sexy. Or instead I just do my Oprah imitation. I go to the mirror and I go, I love bread. I love bread. Yeah, I come from a carbo family. What can I do? But nonetheless, with that being said, I just wanted to remind you that the uh, sages have a very, very different idea of why we're doing yoga. So this is from the Viveka Chudamani by Shankara, one of the Advaita Vedanta non-dualists who ended up worshipping the Divine Mother. So all my ladies out there, you know, I'm with you there. But uh, their mindset is very, very different. And so I thought I'd read a little bit from the Viveka Chudamani, which means the crest jewel of discrimination. That which is unaffected by the six afflictions of aging, death, hunger, thirst, desire, and ignorance, which is meditated on in the heart of the devotee, unrecognized by the senses, unknown by the intellect, you are that, spirit itself. Meditate on that fact within yourself. That basis on which the mistakenly imagined world exists, itself dependent on nothing else, devoid of true and false, without parts, and without mental image, you are that, spirit itself. Meditate on that fact within yourself. That which is indestructible, free from birth, growth, development, decay, illness, and death, which is the cause of creation, maintenance and destruction of everything. You are that, spirit itself. Meditate on that fact within yourself. Free of parts, of an unchanging quality, undisturbed like a waveless sea, declared to be an eternally invisible, indivisible nature. You are that, spirit itself. Meditate on that fact within yourself. Itself one, but the cause of the many, the supreme cause which does not, which does away with all other causes, itself devoid of distinctions of, quote, cause and effect, you are that, spirit itself. Meditate on that fact within yourself. Without modification, great and unending, the supreme reality, beyond destruction and indestructibility, the eternal, unfading, unblemished fulfillment, you are that, spirit itself. Meditate on that fact within yourself. That reality which manifests itself as the many through the illusions of names, shapes, attributes, and changes, but which, like gold, is always itself unchanged in different objects. You are that. God, spirit itself, meditate on that fact within yourself. That beyond which there is nothing, but which shines beyond everything else, the inner, uniform nature of being, consciousness, joy, satchitananda, infinite and eternal, you are that, spirit itself, meditate on that fact within yourself. One should meditate within oneself with a mind well controlled on the truth declared here. Then the truth will be disclosed free from doubt, like water in the palm of one's hand. So that's what they're telling us to do, recognize that we are actually the embodied living spirit, Atman is Brahman, as they would say. The light within us is not really our own. It's the borrowed light from the Supreme. Nonetheless, how do we get there? How do we have this realization? Well, in chapter 1, verse 34 of the Yoga Sutras, it says distinctly that one of the ways of meditating and having this experience is by holding the breath out, external retention, after the long exhale. Yes, that's the way the mind's going to get calm. That's what we're doing with the Bayakumbaka. Now, do we need to have scriptural references to like make us think it has value? No, the best thing is just to experience it yourself. But the fact that they put it down in words indicates that uh, they give it a high value.
So that's what we're doing. Now, one last tip before we do uh, Surya Bedna, piercing the sun channel, which will soothe the digestive processes and invigorate uh, the whole body energy and open up our sinuses. Really good if your pressure is too low, especially if you're sitting around not doing a lot of stuff, not being very active. This is good to keep your energy up. But a little reminder from Prashant, the body, breath, and mind work together like a little triumvirate. That what happens in the body affects the way the mind thinks and the way the breath goes. How the mind thinks or perceives affects the way the body position is and how the breath can be accessed. And of course, how the breath is affects the way the body and the mind are. So these three are together. He calls it breathifying the mind and body, mind mindifying the body and the breath, and bodifying the breath and the mind. Figure that out. Anyway, that's what we're doing. So the first stage is going to be three inhale right, exhale left, open nostrils. Then we'll do the digitally controlled nostrils. Even though if you look at light on pranayama, his first technique was already partially closed inhale right, partially closed exhale left. And then the second stage is where he does the kumbhakas, where he holds the breath internally, pinches the nostrils closed, and does mula mandha. We're working up to that in the next couple of weeks. Nonetheless, let's do it. So take your stance, get your seat, do your lift, open the chest, do your Jalandara Bandha. Take a few restorative breaths. Remember, all pranayamas begin with an exhalation. Raise the hand. Block left, open right. Three in a row now. Inhale through the right. And exhale through the left. Both channels open. Again, block left. Inhale through the right. And exhale through the left. Third time. Inhale through the right. And exhale through the left. Relax your hand. So that's just a simple, both nostrils open, should be relatively clear. Of course, you can always do neti or kapalabhati, something to open up the channels. So it should be that smooth. And then, of course, you can increase the length of time. Remember, I say this every few sessions. Nobody can teach you pranayama on their cadence. You have to learn what the rhythm is that's proper for your body. What time of day you practice, how clogged you are, you have a deviated septum, adenoids, whatever it is. You're a smoker or asthma. You got to do whatever you can, but find out what rhythm works for you. That's another part of yoga balance and skill in action. All right, so the next one is going to be partially closed right nostril inhale, open left nostril exhale, keep the nostrils open, and then hold the breath for eight to ten seconds. Let's give it a shot. Chalandara Banda, don't forget to lift from the deep muladhara. Exhale your breath, raise the hand, block left completely, partially close the right nostril, and inhale. Block right, wide open left nostril, exhale. Drop the hand and hold the breath. Restorative breathing. Remember how the first restorative breath come in? Teaches you everything you need to know about the previous cycle. On the next exhale, as the navel moves back, simultaneously raise the hand, block the left completely, partially close the right, and breathe. Now block the right completely, open the left totally, and exhale. Drop the hand when empty, and hold the breath out. And restore to breathing. Keep the face relaxed. Remember one of the old tips from asana that you can take into pranayama is many of the poses are the same when you get to level two. The only difference is you're always reminded to relax the senses, soften the eyes, soften the ears, soften the throat, soften the tongue, soften the groin, soften the armpits, and so forth. So in the same way, 
Keep relaxing your face, no tension in the face as you're doing these movements. Exhale the breath, raise the hand, block left, partially closed right, inhale. Block the right, open the left and exhale. Notice how my chest doesn't move, I keep the lift, I keep the girth. All happening internally. Drop the hand by a kumbhaka. And restore to breathing. That was round two. Now three cycles. This time it'll be open right inhale, partially closed left. Exhale. Drop the hand, hold the breath. Let's try it. Exhale the breath. Everything free from tension. Raise the arm. Lock left. Open the right. Inhale. Now block the right completely. Partially open or close the left. Either way. Exhale. Drop the hand and wait there. Restore to breathing. Study the nuanced differences between when the nostrils are open, when the nostrils are partially closed, and so forth, and how it feels when you're not blocking the nostrils on the retention. Second cycle, exhale the breath, raise the hand simultaneously, block the left, open right, inhale. Now block the right completely, partially close the left, exhale. Drop the hand by a kumbhaka. Restore to breathing. Third cycle in this third round. Raise the hand. Block left, open right, inhale. Block the right, partially close the left, exhale. Drop the hand, hold the breath out. And breathe in restoratively. All right, now come to the last cycle last part of the breath. This is the most intense. Both nostrils are partially closed and we're going to pinch the nostrils closed when we do the hold. Let's give it a shot. Exhale the breath. Raise the hand. Block left. Partially closed right. Inhale. Block right. Partially closed left. Exhale. Now pinch both nostrils closed, block them and hold. Relax and breathe. Notice how that technique kind of ups the ante a little bit, doesn't it? Mm. All right, let's give it a second time, see if you can improve it. Exhale your breath, raise the hand, block left, partially closed right, inhale. Block the right, partially close the left, exhale. Pinch both closed and hold. Drop the hand, restore to breathing. All right, here we go. Last best chance to get this technique. One more time. Exhale, raise the hand. 
Block the left, partially close the right inhale. Block the right, partially close the left, exhale. Pinch them both closed. And restorative breathing. And gently raise the head and open the eyes. All right, I hope you're feeling really calm, maybe even a little lightheaded after that, but in a good way. And I hope you have a wonderful day. We're going to see you tomorrow.